releasing soon. And then there we go. I will touch on some updates around um, some of our geo booster functionality and some things we've, we've recently done there with some clients. Um, so without further ado then, and then once I'm done, if you, if you have any questions or you want to chat about, it could be unrelated to the software, it could be local SEO, could be, um, anything. So let me go ahead and I will share my screen and give a brief introduction. Let me make sure I'm actually doing the right screen here. So. Uh, let's see. Let me know. You should see what looks like a Figma yep. screen. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So um, welcome, everybody. It looks like John's coming in. Hi, Tammy. So today is the 29th of March. Um, if you are not, if you haven't been on one of these before, my name is Nate. I am the uh, the CTO here at Local Viking. Local brand manager have been um, kind of primarily driving the ship from the software perspective since 2017 when we first started. So um, we do these kind of Wednesday things probably once or twice a month as much as I could get in here. But I do just like to kind of give an update, uh, some status on the software that we're working on, the functionality that we're working on, um, and then also just really hear questions, hear ideas, hear concerns. So for today, what a lot of people have been asking about, particularly because we are taking longer than expected, which is not a um, not a strange thing in the software world, the auditing functionality. So one of the main things that we've been doing for the last several months here is providing a view so that anybody that is managing a GBP or interested in um, what competitors are doing within the context of a keyword and a local geo, um, the audit functionality is coming to kind of help shine a light on that. So really the first things that we're gonna be releasing here and I'm showing uh, a view into our Figma because the last thing that we're doing is actually putting together the visual part. Um, UI UX is pretty consistently some of the most painful part of developing enterprise software here. But really what we want is anybody that comes in and is looking and saying, okay, what are my competition doing that I'm not doing for my listing? Where is the delta between my listing and the listings that are ranking for a particular keyword? So that's kind of the, the main question here that we're trying to answer. And the answer to that question can kind of wax and wane as we look over time. So in today, local rankings might be highly affected by uh, maybe your review total or your review velocity but maybe in a few months from now, Google might turn up the lever on GBP posts and they start looking at that content a little bit closer. Um, we know that categories is a big one. So some of the things that we are really zeroing in on here, just to go to the list, um, first one is going to be analyzing categories. So if you drop in a keyword and a geo will pull out all of the listings that are ranking there and you'll be able to take a look and say okay for all of the listings that i'm looking at does my listing have both the primary category as the majority of my competition potentially you can also see a secondary category that might exist within your competition that you might not be using so really this is going to help us kind of dig into um, from a, a programmatic level, what could our competition be doing to outrank us that we're not doing? So category is a big one. Um, the next thing that's going to be coming here is analyzing the reviews. So taking a look at reviews, we're looking at obviously kind of the aggregate score. Um, we're also looking at the frequency of those reviews coming in the cadence of those reviews. And this is gonna be the first thing, the kind of following this, which we do have some UI being developed for is analyzing the content of the reviews. So if you have been 
um, listening to local SEO people for the last couple of years, the concept of having keyword stuffed reviews has been something that's been often spoken about. Um, that is something that we're going to be analyzing here as well. So at a glance, you'll be able to say, okay, hey, I might not be ranking because all of my competitors that are going from our target keyword have a bunch more reviews and they are generating those reviews at a more consistent um, and potentially quicker pace, which has to do with velocity. So analyzing reviews, this is going to be um, a very big thing here. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the GMB posts. So that is going to be vo both video posts, which are relatively new, and also um, image posts, as well as content posts coming down here. So really just analyzing the type of content that your competitors are posting within a competitive environment. Um, how often they're posting, are they posting videos, are they posting images? When we get down to the uh, the GBP posts or the content posts, we're going to be digging into um, what post types are they using? Are they using standard, offer, new, alerts? Um, all of the things that make up kind of the, the frequency and the substance of the posts. Similar to reviews, once we finish getting this out, the next thing with posts is going to be actually analyzing things like the word count, or uh, we have a word count here, but things like entities within the posts um, and kind of reverse engineering or the, the ultimate goal here sooner than later is having a world where we're, be, we're able to reverse engineer or correlate uh, things that we're seeing from the audit to ranking changes that we see from the geo grid that is powering the audit. So that is going to be um, all released coming up here in the month of April. One of the big things that kind of slowed us down here was a change that Google has been doing. So I just want to give us a quick look. Um, if you look for like a professional services company, in the US, like if I type in vet near me um, and you click into a link, what we are starting to see here is not that. So let's do like, I don't know, personal, I can spell personal injury attorney near me and let's try to trigger. Okay, so this right here, um, this pro, local services pro list um you may have you've probably seen this if you work with gbps but it looks like google is introducing a change in terms of having gbp data show up on a maps interface and this local services url um, is something that they've been testing for uh, a pretty long time i've seen it show up and appear but never really forced entire industries to it. It looks like they're being uh, a bit more stringent with pushing over a lot of their professional services into this UI. Um, one of the fun things dealing with Google from an engineering perspective is if I do that again and say vet near me, and you look at the difference between the UI here. Um, so we see google.com forward slash search forward slash vet uh, over here we see google.com forward slash local services so the interface is completely different um, and then if you look here we have overviews reviews um, well what we want is to also grab these services and a couple of other pieces of data that google's now pushing into this profile and removing from the standard maps url that we usually work with um, so that is something that was uh, an unaccounted for change and we have been dealing with from an engineering perspective to also support um, this UI primarily because it looks like services is one of those things that waxes and wanes in terms of importance and having the ability to affect local ranking. So that is a little bit of an update from us in terms of 
what's happening with the audit functionality, where we're going to be. I'm hoping that the initial kind of release, which will include the category analysis, the review analysis, the media analysis, the posting analysis, um, and potentially the services analysis, since we did wrap that in the new UI. Um, that's all going to be out hopefully within the next week and a half to two and a half weeks, give or take. Um, it's hard to say with UI work, but as soon as we get that out, we will be instantly uh, probably already begun planning other functionality uh, around not only some of the other attributes that we can pull out, but also digging into the content and analyzing it um, at a bit of a deeper level. So with that being said, that is the audit update. That is um, something that you can look forward to. It is something that we're going to use a ton in our agency since we are doing GBP audits all day. So I am confident that over the course of the next several months, this functionality is going to go from um, pretty interesting and pretty cool to extremely interesting and extremely useful. Um, so that is the audit functionality. Now, a couple of other things I just wanted to touch on and point out is some of the work that we have been doing for GeoBooster. Now, I did want to show an actual client of ours. I don't think that they will be upset. So I'm going to actually just show uh, a live client that I was involved in getting help set up. And then I'll ask them if they mind if we, uh, we show them publicly before we actually publish this recording. So one of the things that we've been getting a lot of questions about is the utility of GeoBooster and just getting your biggest bang for your buck out of it. So I think um, not only is GeoBooster great for getting content to your website, uh, to your GBP, but really closing the circuit is its ability to push content out to any social media platform. So in this case, we have uh, two ways to get content out from local Viking or local brand manager. And one of them is via Zapier. So if you are familiar with Zapier, it is kind of um, an inter integrations platform that allows you to connect any two platforms together. Uh, there's another similar platform called Pabbly, which is basically a cheaper version of uh, Zapier. So we have wired up several different uh, social media platforms successfully now. Uh, some of them actually require Pabbly or work better with Pabbly to get the multi-images to stream in and others work perfect with Zapier. So to give a quick example, let's say for instance, that you have uh, a garage that is in need of organization, then you might work with a company such as Garage Tech. Now Garage Tech, specializes in organizing spaces, primarily garages. So that is actually a perfect industry, a uh, perfect example of a company that would be great for showing potential customers before and after pictures of their work. It is a beautiful example of kind of why we developed uh, GeoBooster and just a perfect industry for GeoBooster making sense. So I am popping into their Facebook page here and we can see that they are now streaming their jobs to their Facebook and they're able to push uh, just one photo if they want. They can also stream a couple of photos here. You can see that this one has five photos. So this setup right here is dynamically connected to multiple GBPs. They have, I think, five or six locations hooked up. Um, each of those five or six locations has a location page that we've wired up GeoBooster to 
they have their GBPs and they have their Facebook page wired up. They have an Instagram page wired up that's getting these. And they also have a Pinterest page that we've wired up so that we are pushing out content to all of those places every single day now. And they're getting content intelligently published to their kind of city geo pages going out to their socials. Um, not only is it sending the algorithmic single uh, signals to Google and to the search engines that they are active, they are providing service in particular areas. Um, it is actually serving as a conversion booster from the business's side where if I'm a potential customer, I'm looking for somebody to uh, kind of organize my garage boom, I find their social media, maybe I'm on my app on Instagram, I find their Instagram page, whatever it is, I am now exposed to the high quality work that they do. And I'm able to see exactly kind of what I had in mind with getting my garage organized. So this is a canonical example, I would say of a perfect usage of geo booster. And it's really hitting all of the Um, all of the right things. It's getting the algorithmic boost and it's getting the real world conversion uh, makes sense for the business to be producing this content boost. So that is something that I just wanted to um, just wanted to go ahead and show people. I know uh, if you're working with like professional services companies, we've had a lot of questions about what type of content uh, and examples of seeing GeoBooster being used. I know that can be difficult. Um, we are working on clients in those industries and niches, kind of getting them set up. Uh, but this is just a really perfect example of if you're working with like a landscaping company, um, I don't know, anybody that has a really visual uh, job that they're doing. And again, if you're looking for any kind of, I don't know, spiritual guidance, um, creative boosts, and you can come in here straight to our homepage and click on this learn more now. And then if you scroll down, we will be continuously feeding new examples into this section here. So if you happen to work with a company, it's industry, or maybe you're going to do a sales call um, with a company in this industry, certainly putting together a mini pitch about GeoBooster and its ability to help the business create more content, um, help the business publish content more intelligently, uh, and really just kind of give them an extra boost against their competition. Uh, Feel free to pop in here, take a look at what we've done, and think about if you can either reuse, recycle, or maybe change a little bit and push towards your own sales efforts. So those are really the two big things that I did want to touch on. Um, In terms of other engineering, I'm actually, I should have checked up on this right before, but there is uh, geogrid notification things that are happening either already deployed or maybe deploying soon. Um, Those are going to be Uh, Just notifications telling you when a particular grid has a grid point that is in the top three for either the first time or in the top three for a second or greater time. And then the only other thing I think we recently released is a version of our GeoGrid images that is um, headless. So let me quickly show that. So if you are using our API for anything related to GeoGrids and you go to leave the GeoGrid show endpoint here, um, let me actually double check. Yep. So we are now including a, a headless image for GeoGrid PNGs. So the traditional GeoGrid PNG has a title at the top, if you will, or a header that says like the name of the business, the keyword, um, the the metrics around that particular grid, um, and then the date, I think, if I didn't say that. Um, The headless geogrid image is just an image of the geogrid itself. 
and doesn't include any of that header information at the top. So that can be used uh, if you want to kind of programmatically pull in GeoGrid images into maybe your own reporting software. Uh, we have customers that use like agency analytics and we use our own reporting suite to pull that in. Um, so that kind of allows you to have a more magnified view or a more magnified uh, GeoGrid PNG that then you can put the title or the stats yourself outside of um, the PNG itself. So just a little bit more flexible way for you to use Ge GeoGrid PNG images in your reporting. Um, that is live right now because this is live documentation. Um, okay, so as 24 minutes of me talking, I think that's everything I have to say. If anybody who is on uh, has any questions about anything, feel free to unmute yourself, pop in here. Um, it could be about local Viking, local brand manager. It could be about uh, local SEO. It could be about maybe a particular campaign you're working on. Um, I have a pretty deep breadth of experience as it comes to these things. Um, if there are no questions, no comments, no concerns, then we can wrap this up. Uh, this recording will be available and uploaded to everywhere we upload things. And I will go ahead and give us a minute here. Otherwise, I will assume that we are ready to go about our day. I have a question. Um, as far as yes. this auditing Hello, goes, yeah, as far as this auditing goes mm -hmm. and what you're talking about with geo boosters, is this part of the standard package or is this an add on expense um, that you'd have to purchase? Great question. So, um, geo booster right now comes free with every one location gets geo booster for every single local Viking account. Um, right now, I believe we have pricing at $50 a month extra per location with geo booster. Um, that is something that is potentially subject to change and become a little bit cheaper. We are looking at pricing given that our first seat you can come in at $20, which was originally we thought was just going to be a GeoGrid plan. Then we gave them a seat of a location and now they have GeoBooster. So we kind of want to fix that discrepancy between a business being able to come in and pay $20 for the whole thing versus our agencies that have a $50 cost. Um, so we're, we're going to do something with, with, geo booster pricing over the next month here um audit functionality is coming out of the box everybody will get some base level of credits for audit functionality and then similar to uh, similar to geogrids audit functionality will have a base credit and then you can get more credits for higher plans or you can buy specific credits and we might even make those credits just uh geogrid credits and have like okay a geogrid point takes one geogrid credit but an audit business takes i don't know 200 so we're gonna kind of we're gonna deal with mixing and matching um we got my cat over here freaking out um we're gonna deal with mixing and matching credits um and allowing it so that everybody gets some level of base usage and then People that want to use more can upgrade or can buy credit so that they can do that. Um, we are desperately trying to avoid the introduction of a new credit. Um, one of the very painful things that we've done in our lives over here at the engineering side was introduce GeoGrid and traditional rank tracking credits. I can't tell you how much I wish that we spent more time thinking about how to have a unified credit there because we've answered that question what must be thousands of times over the years so um, to answer your question tammy you'll have access to it every account will and then based off of usage there will be a credit system 
um, because funnily enough, the auditing functionality is by far the most expensive thing that we are doing in our infrastructure now. Um, pulling data out of a GMB, if it has like dozens or hundreds or potentially thousands of reviews, um, takes like an order of a magnitude longer than just pulling rank tracking data essentially. So like, is this something that you would notify us about? I mean, can we just go in and play with it and we can see what we can do? And then you would probably be Yeah, like, we're okay. gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna notify, we're definitely gonna notify. And, and to be honest, we're, we're late. Like this should have, I would have wished that the functionality was released, but um, we, we fought some uphill battles that we weren't expecting. So yeah, I ex expect uh, a ton of, of uh, information and, and training and kind of, I don't know, noise from us once this is truly ready. It's okay. um it's gonna be it's gonna be a big feature of ours over the next year and moving forward. Um so yeah, there we'll be showing you how to use it from kind of our own perspective, which is we're also agency owners that are working on campaigns day in and day out with our teams. So like diagnosing issues when you have a client that you've been working on a campaign and for whatever reason it's not ranking um i think there's going to be a lot of a lot of training around that um using it for a sales tool is going to be something that we're uh, going to be actively running our sales guys through and girls um and just kind of is this something we can use as like before we've closed the deal hey business look at look at how you're underperforming right now. All of your competitors are posting this often. They have this many photos that they've uploaded. Um, your categories are off a little bit. So um, kind of every aspect of local SEO and, and closing a deal, working on a campaign, I think that there's going to be multiple different entry points that this functionality is going to be really useful for. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you, Tammy. Thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've been 30 minutes. I don't want to uh, to hold everybody up and I do have to get back to my own day here. So we will go ahead and, and um, get this recording out and published. Again, if you have any questions you want to follow up, you can reach me, Nate at localviking.com. Um, you can also reach us on our live chat, which is at the bottom right of the dashboard. If you do email me, please CC support at localviking.com, just so that our customer support team will also see that while I'm in and out of calls. Um, and then I think the next one of these will either be in two weeks or in three weeks. Um, I would like to do the next one as actually instead of me showing a Figma screen, I will show the local Viking or local brand manager dashboard with the audit functionality they're working. So that'll be the next video we do. Um, and then I hope that everybody has a great rest of your week and a great start to your April since we are just finishing out. Is that Q Q1? Oh boy, just finishing out Q1. Um, all right, everybody. Have a good day, and I will talk to you later. Thank you.